Happy Christmas and a very, very warm welcome to you all to St. Paul's Hammersmith's Carols by Candlelight. We are so delighted to be um, celebrating Christmas with you, whether you come regularly or just pop by occasionally. We're thrilled that you're here tonight. This evening, um, as usual in our carol services, there'll be a mix of readings from the Bible, songs that we will sing together to remember this Christmas story. And I want to encourage you, let's lean in. Let's hear fresh aspects of this story. And I'm going to pray in just a moment as we begin our service together that God would be amongst us, that we would encounter him tonight. We gather to worship Jesus. So if you'd pray with me. Through scripture and silence, prayer and song, let us hear again the wonderful story of our redemption. And hearing, let us rejoice with great joy and respond with lively faith. Almighty God, you make us glad with the yearly remembrance of the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that as we joyfully receive him as our Redeemer, we may, be sh we may with sure confidence behold him when he shall come to be our judge who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever, be with us. Amen. Let's stand to sing our first carol together.
The first, the first reading is taken from the book of Genesis, chapter 3, verses 8 to 15 and 17 to 19. The man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the coolness of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the, the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He was he was answered. I, I answered you, I heard you rather, in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked. The Lord God said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from these trees that I told you not to and commanded you to do? The man said, the woman you put here with me, she gave me. She gave me some fruit from that tree, and, and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this that you've done? The woman said, the serpent deceived me, and I ate so the Lord God said to the serpent, because you've done this, cursed are you above all the animals, all the livestock, and all the wild ones as well. You will forever crawl on your belly, and you will reach dust. all the days of your life, and I will get enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will crush you with your, your head, and you will strike his, his heel. To Adam, he said, because you have listened to your wife, and ate from that tree about which I said to you that you must not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. Th through painful toil you will eat of it all the day of your life. This is the end, this is the Word of the Lord.
The second reading is from Isaiah 9, verse 2, 6, and 7. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. For to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. This is the word of the Lord.
Isaiah 11, 1 to 9. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots, a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of might, the spirit of the knowledge and fear of the Lord, and he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears, but with righteousness he will judge the needy, with justice he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. The wolf will live with the lamb, the leopard will lie down with the goat, the calf and the lion and the yearling together, and a little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear, their young will lie down together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the cobra's den, and the young child will put its hands into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. This is the word of the Lord.
there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. This is the word of the Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life. And that life was the light of mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him, all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son who came from the father full of grace and truth. This is 
the word of the Lord. Well, Christmas is a time when we are provoked to give, and uh, we have a secret ambition as a church here in West London to try and become the most generous people in this city, and uh, our heart is to both support and to bless those who have need at this time of year. And so there's an opportunity to give tonight, if you would like to, to a number of charities, some of which are local to us and some are more global. Um, on the back page of your order of service, you'll find a page that tells you about those charities. And at the bottom, there's a QR code. So th those of you who are familiar with using QR codes, you can scan that even now if you'd like to. And you can give online uh, to these charities. But you'll also be able to give later through our various sum up machines in the atrium if you're able to stay for Prosecco and Panettone and join, uh, join with us afterwards. Then do stay and you can give at that stage as well if you'd like to. The charities that we're supporting this year as a community um, our spear, uh, we have a spear centre right here at St Paul's Hammersmith, uh, which does phenomenal work, working with dozens of teenagers, some of whom you've seen this evening, equipping them to get over the barriers to employment that they face and helping them give them skills, confidence to be able to step into the workplace and to be able to become part of society. Uh, the work of Spear is phenomenal, and if you haven't come across it, then we'd welcome you to one of our graduations in the coming year to come and hear about that work. We'll also be supporting locally the work of Crosslight. It's a debt advice centre that operates here. It also operates in other parts of London, but we have a centre right here at, at St Paul's. And Crosslight is helping people who are facing money worries, um, sometimes who have got into debt for all kinds of reasons and don't know where to turn. And um, there's a real need, and you can imagine now with the cost of living crisis, to be supporting those who are vulnerable in our community. And so we want to continue supporting that work if you'd like to join us in that. More globally, we'll be supporting an African Dream and the GoGo -Go Trust, both of whom work with orphans and widows across different parts of Africa. And um, both have Christmas projects they're delivering that we want to help support as they support those who are in real need and great poverty. Um, we're also going to be making contributions to the Hammersmith and Fulham Christmas Day lunch that will be happening uh, right here in Hammersmith. So if you'd like to support that work, we'd love to encourage you to do so. You can do that right now whilst we listen to the next part of our service, or you can do that at the end if you'd like to um, through the sum-up machines um, at the back. Thank you for being part of transforming our city and beyond. Wait. 
Wow, Mim, thank you so much. Well, I hope you've managed to get your Christmas shopping done. Is that right? I can already see a few grimaces amongst the congregation. Those of us who are thinking, oh no, don't mention that. I've got so much to do. I haven't got time to sit down in a carol service. There's always lots to get, isn't there? Always lots to do before Christmas. And uh, maybe you're one of those organized souls and all the gifts are purchased, wrapped and ready under the tree. Or if you're like me, It'll be a Christmas Eve job. Who knows? Um, gifts are really important. And of course, this is a time of giving at Christmas time. And some gifts are better than others. And there are very occasionally, there are gifts that just keep on giving. And if you find one of those gifts that just keeps on giving, you're onto something very good. I discovered one a few years ago, and I'm going to let you into the secret because I think it might help, particularly if you've got more shopping still to do. A few years ago, um, I found the perfect gift that keeps on giving for my wife, Sarah, who you met at the beginning of the service. I gave Sarah an electric blanket. Oh, yes, an electric blanket. Some of you are nodding now. You're like, oh, yeah, mine's on already. It's keeping the bed warm for later. Um, this was a gift that, um, you know, Sarah's always a bit cold at nighttime and you know, suddenly one day, ah, oh, electric blanket, that'll do. And we got the, bl and it's transformed her life to the point where every night when we get into bed, she, she will lie there and go, oh, and it's nothing to do with the fact that she's with her husband. It's just to do with the fact that she's lying on the electric blanket. 
It's all that she wants to do. It's all she wants to be. And actually, um, the electric blanket gave me yet another gift this week because on Monday, in the cold weather, the electric blanket broke. Disaster, I know. But it was our anniversary on Thursday. And so I bought a double electric blanket. (laughs) We doubled up and we went far. It's amazing. And so now she's even more delighted and that gift will keep on giving. So, of course, Christmas is about these gifts. It's about giving. Uh, And, of course, we know as well that it's about the greatest gift that has ever been given. Isaiah writes about it, and we've heard it read in these Bible stories tonight. Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is not loaned. It's not given with any sort of grudge or return but is given. Isaiah wrote those words around 700 years before Jesus was born. Isaiah the prophet, who's captured right here in this Bible, along with other prophets, wrote many things about a child that would be born. In fact, there are over 365 prophecies in the Old Testament, many of them written by Isaiah, but also many others who heard from God and sensed something extraordinary was going to happen. They wrote about who he would be, where he had come from, the line of family that he'd be in, details about his death that no one could have known, details about his birth, his parents, the nature of his life, even that he would be born in a little place called Bethlehem, just outside Jerusalem. Can you imagine that? Imagine if more than 365 people all told you about an event that was going to happen next week and gave you different angles on that event and gave you different perspectives on what would go on and who would be there and and how it would work out and told you all kinds of details. And then it happened. You might be caught in wonder and awe And that's how all the members that we gather around this nativity story felt when they witnessed these promises coming to pass. So along with all the questions we might have on Christmas Eve, like, where am I going to get that gift that never stops giving? Or how does Father Christmas get down every chimney in one night? You might find yourself asking the question, Who is this Jesus that we celebrate year after year? Well, Isaiah gives us a few more hints. And he gives us some of the names of who Jesus is. One of the names that Isaiah gives us, it says that this child would be called Emmanuel. Now, Emmanuel means literally God with us. God with us. And so whilst the Bible would teach us that God actually is everywhere, he is in all things, he sees all things, we can encounter him anywhere and everywhere, we can meet with his presence, God is everywhere, he's omnipresent, he's omniscient, he's he's everywhere. It's hard for our finite minds to get hold of, isn't it? An infinite God who's so other than, he's everywhere and yet in Isaiah tells us that he would become tangible, clear, holdable, present. Emmanuel, God with us. Another literal translation of that Emmanuel is literally God with skin on. It's literally grabbing, here's God and God's got skin on. So much so that we could actually tangibly get hold of who he was. It was the gift that God gave us that he would enable us to get hold of and see and understand in a way that we might perceive. And so this God with skin on came as a prince of peace. And a prince of peace brings peace and comfort to a struggling world. This God with skin on came as the mighty God, one who would add strength to a world that feels so weak and tentative. This God with skin on came as the wonderful counselor, 
one who would bring wisdom and guidance when we just don't know what we seem to be doing. And this God with skin on came as the everlasting Father, one who would love perfectly. Seems odd, doesn't it, to call Jesus, this God with us, this Emmanuel, the everlasting Father. And yet in the Gospel of John, John says that Jesus says, I am the Father and one. If you see me, you see the Father. If you see me, you see God. I am God with skin on. It's an outrageous and incredible claim that we'd be wise not to ignore in the busyness of our lives. God with us. Now sometimes we really want someone to be with us, don't we? We really want someone to be with us. I know that some of you in your beds with electric blankets still sleep with a teddy bear or a snuggly. Come on, hands up. Come on, there's more of you than that. I know. And you know that feeling of I really want that, that, that thing, that teddy bear, that snuggly. I want it with me. Perhaps as children we feel that so strongly. I remember cycling around London trying to find a replacement snuggly for my daughter once because she had lost it and would not sleep without it. She needed it. She wanted it. I bought four in case we'd ever lose another one. And then she found the spare ones and now she sleeps with all four. It's not only just we need someone to be with us. We want someone to be with us. I remember a day several years ago, one of the hardest days of my life. And um, I had been witness to an incredible tragedy at an event that I was involved with in our church community when I was working in a different place. And it was tragic and a friend had lost their lives. And it was such an event that it attracted media attention. And so all the cameras turned up, the journalists, it was headline news and on all the papers and I remember battling my way through that day tearful most of the time trying to hold composure for all those that were struggling with the trauma and at the end of the day I I wasn't living with my parents at the time but I just thought I, I just need to go back to my family home and I knew my mum and dad were away they were traveling, and so I didn't expect to see them there, but I just wanted to go somewhere where I'd find comfort, peace, maybe strength, maybe an attachment to knowing safety. And as I arrived home and made my way back to my family home, I walked up the path and I could see a light on. And the door flung open. And there was my father standing at the door. And I collapsed into his arms and wept. On that day, I knew I needed someone else. He didn't need to say anything. He was just with me. It's a little bit like that picture right there. Our friend Charlie Mackesy painted that for us. He's got an animation coming out on Christmas Eve that will be the main Christmas Eve animation on BBC. Look out for it. But he painted that picture to remind us of a story that Jesus told us. Of a son who found himself way off, out in the coldness, the darkness, but coming to his senses and saying, I need to be with God, but will God be with me? And Jesus tells the story that the son, the prodigal son, returned and came home ready with a speech prepared to both apologize but also expect way less and that they wouldn't be received. And yet the father flung his arms around the son and received him home. And Jesus told that story because it described exactly what God was doing when Jesus came as a baby in a manger. God embracing us in our mess, 
in our darkness, the light coming in. Whatever you think, whatever's happened to you in all your struggles, in all our traumas, of which many of us have experienced many over the last few years, I want you to know tonight that there is a perfect father waiting at the door for you to be with you. God is not content with dwelling in our imagination, somewhere just beyond our reach. He chose to dwell, to live, to make his home with us. God with skin on. So whoever you are, whether you're a Catholic, Protestant, or whether you're agnostic or atheist or anything else you might identify yourself as, he wants you to come home and he wants to be with you. Now Jesus taught us exactly what it says in that passage from Genesis that we heard read at the beginning of our service. That our thoughts, our decisions, our actions have so often corrupted our relationships, have left us out in the dark. Our relationships with each other, our relationship with the environment, our relationship ultimately with God. Those actions have separated us. They've cut us off from his love. And so God did what we could not do. He broke into human history to make it obvious, to be God with skin on and show us the way so that he would be with us, identifying with us, making himself present with us to meet us where we were at and then lovingly lead us back to himself and into an eternal relationship that would never end. And if you so desire this evening, you can receive that greatest gift of all. God with us right now here in this church. John wrote, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory. I have seen his glory. I can testify to it. And you can too. And it's not just that he wants to be with us even in the challenge and the struggle and any of the trauma or the mental health issues or the the worries about your finances or the relationships or your job. It's not that he just wants to be with us in the midst of all of that, but he wants to bring you joy in the midst of that. Can you believe it? I can't imagine what the shepherds must have felt out on that dark hillside, getting on with their everyday life. Can you imagine it? Just outside Bethlehem, they're there looking after sheep and it's a tough job. It's not an easy job. It was a difficult job. It was pretty dangerous. They're fending off thieves and wild animals. Shepherds were shunned by society. They were seen as fringe people and they were excluded so often from society gatherings. And they were living in a land that was occupied where they weren't totally free and they were looked down upon. And yet, we're told in Luke's gospel account that they found joy even in the midst of that circumstance. Why? Because Jesus was born. He came to be with us. They discovered him. They found him. They came across this baby just like it was told to them. They were witness to angels. They followed what the angels said and they found him. And in finding him, they realized the truth that God is Emmanuel, God with skin on, God with us. And whatever their circumstance, they found joy. And they went around all of Bethlehem, every street, telling the good news, the story of a God who had broken into their world, light into darkness, Emmanuel. Hammersmith, London, you can know that joy tonight. It's not a story that's just consigned to the pages of this beautiful book. It's a story that can be alive in your heart even now. Some gifts just keep on giving. And electric blankets are really good. But Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. Well, that's the greatest gift of all. 
Will you pray with me? Jesus, you promised that where two or three gathered in your name, you'd be there in their midst by the power of your Holy Spirit. And you have been with us tonight. And I pray in this moment, people all across this congregation would sense and know your tangible presence as you rest upon them. Come in your power and presence yourself in our hearts now. Thank you, God. Now, you may have been to church a million times, or maybe this is your first time. But maybe even in this moment, you tangibly sense his presence. Or you feel like you want to make some kind of response to Jesus. I made that response for the first time when I was 14. And it's changed my life forevermore. And if you would like this evening to invite God to be with you, to invite Jesus to be alive and active in your life, to follow him, that's what it means to be a Christian, a follower of Jesus. You may not have all the answers, you may not have all the solutions, but this evening you actually want to begin a, the adventure, the journey with him and say, okay, Jesus, if you really are God with us, then come and live in my heart. Then I'm going to invite you to pray a short prayer with me, just in the quiet of your heart where you are. And you can make this your prayer. God will take you at your word. And you can begin your journey with him. I'm going to read the words of the last verse of O Little Town of Bethlehem that we sang a few moments ago. And they're words that simply invite Jesus to live in your life. And as I pray this, if you'd like to repeat it in your heart and make it your own, you can make your own commitment to following him this evening. So just repeat this quietly in your heart where you are if you'd like to. O holy child of Bethlehem, descend to me, I pray. Cast out my sin and enter in. Be born in me today. I've heard the Christmas angels and the great glad tidings told. Oh, come to me. Abide with me, my Lord, Emmanuel. Well, this joy being told of him with us is something we're going to sing about now. So why don't we stand together and join in our next carol.
Well, I don't know about you, but throughout the whole service, I've kept finding myself going, wow, wow, wow. And that's so largely due to these incredible musicians and the choir, and particularly Elisabetta Bell, who's been conducting this evening. Can we show our huge appreciation? <laughs> to In fact, I'm going to ask you to do an even bigger applause um, just to thank Elisabetta particularly, who tirelessly works to help bring all of this together, all the different music sheets, all the different conversations, all the admin behind it, everything, and then all the energy with which she conducts, not just the orchestra, but all of us as the congregation, doesn't she? So can we please give Elisabetta a huge thanks? Before we enjoy our Prosecco and Panettone, and I do hope you'll stay afterwards uh, for a, to stay for a drink, to celebrate together and to continue our conversations and reflect on this story. Um, we'd love to give this gift to people as they leave. Um, this is a little book called Why Christmas, and it explains a bit more about the Christmas story, tells some of the Bible verses that we've looked at tonight, and explains what it means uh, and how it connects to uh, what it means to have faith. And I want to really encourage you, why don't you take one? If you've never had one of these, take one on your way out. But particularly this evening, if you prayed that prayer uh, from, from that I read out and just made that your own prayer, your commitment to following him, then I want to really encourage you, why don't you take this? And at the back of that little book, there's a prayer that's very similar to the one we prayed. It's not quite the same words because I stole from a carol, but there's another one in there. And you can uh, look at that tonight and reflect on it. You'll find in there an invitation to Alpha, and they're also on your chairs as well. Um, Alpha's an amazing course that is just a very, very relaxed environment where we gather together over a meal. Uh, there's usually a short talk that you know, gives an, a few perspectives on one aspect of Christian faith. But the main element of Alpha is then getting together in discussion groups. And people from all thoughts, traditions, backgrounds, people with faith, no faith at all, um, atheists, Muslim, whatever your background, to come and share what you think about these issues, to grapple with the big questions of life. And uh, if you've never done Alpha, then maybe 2023 is your year. Our next course starts on the 25th of January. Uh, that will be the launch night. If you can't make that night, you're welcome to come the week after or the week after that. If you missed the first one or two, it's not the end of the world. So do come and join us for that. You can book online, which helps us with catering and giving you perfect food. Um, but if you just want to turn up on the night, uh, then do that. And why don't you bring a friend? It's absolutely brilliant. And uh, we've seen lots of people build new friendships, strengthen community, and discover all kinds of things as they've asked the big questions of life this year uh, through our Alpha courses. So join us for one of those. That would be really good. I'm going to pray a prayer of blessing in just a moment as our final prayer. And then we'll stay afterwards to celebrate. But let's pray. So now may the wisdom of the wonderful counselor guide you. May the strength of the mighty God empower you. May the love of the everlasting Father surround you. And may the presence of the Prince of Peace fill you this night. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, rest and remain upon you this Christmas time and evermore. Amen. Let's stand to sing our final carol. <laughs>